to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. When you go out at night and you view the expansive universe, you look at the magnitude of the stars, you look at the moon, and, and when you behold God's beautiful creation from the, from the heights to the depths of it, aren't you impressed with the question of Psalm 8 verse 4? What is man? that you are mindful of him, or the son of man, that you care for him. Why am I the pinnacle of God's creation? Why does God care about me and you? What a great question the psalmist asked in Psalm 8, verse 4, and we're going to answer that question in our study today. We hope you've got your Bible. If you don't have your Bible, we hope that you'll locate it as we think about the power of the question, what is man? that God cares for him. We're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. As always, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your local area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether that be on Sunday for worship or Wednesday for Bible study, you would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people there who love God, who love others, and who are deeply concerned about the souls of men and women. Friend, if you've got a Bible question, maybe you're wondering about salvation or the church or, or any number of religious uh, matters, you'll find people in the Lord's church in your local area who'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you in kindness and love and look at the truth of God's Word. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your desire to know God better. We encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our lessons. They're available to you free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, just go to our website, fill out a media request form. We'd be happy to make that available to you as a digital download or other formats if you need that as well. And friend, we want to encourage you also to check us out on Facebook, like our Facebook page, follow us on that. Great way to keep up with things that we're doing. And then, of course, in our fast-paced world today, where everybody's got a smartphone, we want to encourage you to check out the Gospel of Christ app that's available in the respective Play Stores. You can get it there, and it's a great way to keep up with our new lessons, what we're doing, and just so that you can know how we're trying to spread the Gospel and reach people with the news of Jesus Christ. And as always... We want to thank you today for joining us for our study. Hope you've got your Bible ready. Let's look to the Word of God together. What is man that you're mindful of him? That is a very humbling question. Of all of God's creation, of all the intricate details that God worked into humanity, why me? That's what the psalmist says. Why does God spe take special attention and special care to a, a, a low person like me and you? Why am I constantly in the thoughts of Almighty God? What is it about, what is it about man, me and you, that makes him so special in God's sight? I want you to take your Bible, and I want you to look with me, and let's read together Psalm chapter 8, and then we want to consider that great question, what is man that you're mindful of him? Look at Psalm chapter 8, beginning in verse number 1. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and stars which you've ordained, what is man that you're mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? 
For you have made him a little lower than the angels. You've crowned him with glory and honor. You've made him to have dominion over the works of your hand. You've put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Well, friend, let's take a moment today and let's answer that question from the Word of God. Why does God care about lowly man? Why does God care about me and you? Friend, God cares about us because it's in His nature. The nature of God is that He is a caring and loving God. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, God said, let us make man in our image. According to the male and female, he made him. In the image of God, he made them. Genesis 2, verse 7, The Lord God breathed in the man the breath of life, and man became a, a living soul. And yet, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Of God, we can cast all our care upon him. He cares for us. Why does God care about me? Because I'm made in his image, and it's in God's nature. God is a caring God, and it's in his nature to care for man. God cares about me and you because he's a loving father. Jesus taught us to pray, our father who art in heaven. God is our creator. We're, the, we're his creation. We're made in his image. And just like any father, God cares about us because he created us. Hebrews 12 verse 9 says, he's the father of our spirits. First Thessalonians chapter 2, he is a like a loving father, like a nursing mother. He, he t is tenderly and affectionately caring for us, just as any father or mother would for their children. Why does God care about me and you? He wants to spend eternity with us. Matthew 25, 46, the Bible says, as Jesus speaks about heaven and earth, one day it'll pass away. But Jesus says of heaven and of earth, the righteous will go away into eternal life, the unrighteous into eternal condemnation. God wants us to live forever in eternal life with him. First Timothy 2 verse 4, God wants all, listen to this now. This is why God cares about you and me. God wants all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. God doesn't want anybody to perish, but everyone to go into everlasting life. 2 Peter 3, verse 9. And so God, his nature is that he's caring. That's why he cares about me. He's a, just like any father or mother. He has that loving, nurturing nature, and he wants us to spend eternity with him. But you know, God also, he cares about me and you because he wants our happiness. Any father wants for his children to be happy, to be blessed, to live the best life they can. God's no different. Happy is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the place of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but happy is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. Our God is a God who cares deeply for us and he desperately wants us to be happy. That's why God cares for me. But friend, when we think about the question, what is man? Let's consider that for just a moment. What is man that you care for him? We've answered the idea of why God cares for us, but let's back up to the bigger question. And this ties into the overall idea of the psalm. What is man? In reality, we're asking, what am I? What are you? The natural answer is we're, we're human beings. We're flesh and blood. We're, we're people on this earth. But I want you to think a little deeper about what the Bible says man actually is. What are you and what am I? I am the pinnacle of God's creation. I, of everything that God made, the Bible teaches man is the pinnacle of that. Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 21 following, we there see that, that if God so cares for the birds of the air and the flowers of the field, which today are here and tomorrow pass, will he not much more care for you, 
Oh, you have little faith? Oh, what's the point of what Jesus is saying? If the birds and the grass, God takes care of them, and you're the pinnacle of his creation, is he not going to take care of you? Everything in Genesis 1 and 2 that God made, you know the only thing God made in his image and put his spirit in is man. God said, let us make man in our image. God breathed in the man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. We're the pinnacle of God's creation because we have God's spirit in us. We're made in the image of God, and God cares for us on an infinite level. And so when I think about this question, what is man? We realize the value of humanity based on who God is and that we're made in his image and what a beautiful thought and idea that is. What is man? As we've mentioned, we're made in God's image. This is a beautiful idea that we really want to drive home. Listen to Genesis chapter 1. I want you to hear the words of Genesis 1 verses 26 and 27 as God speaks on the days of creation. Then God said, let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Now listen to the recounting of that in Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, man became a living being or a living soul. Being made in the image of God is special. It's unique. You know, you can look at some people's children and you can say, that's a carbon copy of that person. They are definitely that person's son or daughter. They are made in their image. They, they represent and they look like them in every way. Well, friend, that's what's unique about God didn't do that to the beast of the field or the birds of the air or the fish of the sea. None of that represented God. But I made it. I made in the representation and the image of Almighty God. And that, that separates me from everything else that exists today. Why does God care for me? I'm made in His image. I represent Him in my very creation of who I am. What is man? that God cares for him. I'm a living soul or a living spirit. Genesis 2 verse 7. Again, the Bible says, God breathed in the man out of the dust of the ground, out of dirt. God made man and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And listen to this. And man became a living being. The actual Hebrew word is a living soul. What is man? Unlike the animals, unlike the birds, unlike the fish of the sea, God did something different with me and you. God created in us a living soul or a living spirit. And friend, what's unique about man, that God especially, don't get me wrong, God cares for the birds and God cares for the beast and God cares for the fish, but what's different about me and you than all of that and all of creation is, I've been given a living spirit. I've been giving a live, given a living soul by God that's going to last beyond this life. Listen to Ecclesiastes 12, verse 7. The Bible records these words. The dust returns to the ground from where it came, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. The righteous, Jesus said, would one day go into eternal life, the unrighteous into eternal condemnation. Jesus would later say in John 5, verse 28 and 29, all are in the grave. One day going to come forth. That living spirit is one day going to come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. And so what makes man unique? I have a spirit or soul that's living that's going to live beyond this life, when the old body decays, that spirit is going to return back to God. And God wants us to live with him forever in eternity. And so I've been blessed with and given by God a living soul or spirit that's going to live somewhere for eternity. That, that, that's unlike the animals 
who just return to the dust. They're not going to live forever. The birds are not going to live forever. The, the, the fish of the sea, once they're gone, they're gone. Their life is used up and spent. But man, me and you, we're unique because we will transcend beyond this life to the spirit realm. And God will decide based on our obedience to Jesus Christ where we're going to spend eternity. What is man? Friend, let's also realize that we're partly flesh. Man is a soul, spirit, and body, but I can't ignore the flesh. What is man? We're fleshly. Genesis 2 verse 7, the Lord God created man out of the dust of the ground. The dust is going to return back to the ground. Here's the challenge. I am both soul, body, and spirit. I'm a spirit and a body. Friend, I can't let the flesh lead around the spirit. To be carnally minded, fleshly minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Paul would say in Romans chapter 7 and in Romans chapter 8. And so while we're flesh, and, and God knows that, friend, I can't just let the flesh take control and, and lead me around by the nose, as it were. I've got to realize in this fleshly tent that he is going to perish, there is a spirit being. And God cares for me on a fleshly level, but on a spiritual level, God cares for me just as well. What is man? Friend, I am a, if I'm a Christian especially, I'm a child of God. Galatians 4 verses 4 through 6. God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts crying out, Abba, Father, we are the adopted children of Almighty God. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we can be called children of God. We're God's children. We pray, our Father who art in heaven. Man didn't think God up. God created us. Just like parents have children today, God's that Father. We're His child. We're amenable to and responsible to, and we ought to love and want to follow after God in every way. What am I? I'm a soul. I'm a soul who has departed from God's ways at least once in my life, or more than that. I'm a soul in need of God's grace and mercy. By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. John 1.17 says, The law came through Moses, but grace and truth are found in Jesus. By his mercy, we're saved. The mercy of God is new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, Jeremiah would say in Lamentations 3, verse 20 and 21. In all honesty, I'm a soul who has sinned in need of God's grace and mercy and all of us of an accountable age are that way. What am I? I'm not independent. I, I can't do it alone. I need help. I can't live a life as though I'm on an island and it's just me and I can live and do it all by myself in a state of anarchy. It's, it's not the way it works. Hebrews 13 verses 5 and 6. Let your life be without covetousness, the writer would say. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you so that you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? I need that help. I need that grace. See, I can come boldly to the throne of grace where I might find grace and mercy to help in time of need. What am I and what are you that God cares for us? I'm an individual. I'm a soul preparing for eternity. Why are you here? What's it all about? Why are you on this terrestrial ball? Why God give you life? I'm here to prepare for eternity. Ecclesiastes 12, verses 13 and 14. Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What's it all about? Fear God. Keep His commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Jesus asked similar questions about the purpose of man in Mark chapter 8, verse 36 and 37. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world 
and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? We don't look at the things which are outward. We look at the things which are, are real, not the temporary, but the eternal. For our hope is in the eternal things. 2 Corinthians 4, verse number 16. And so I'm a soul, you're a soul that is preparing for eternity. If all I'm doing is living for the here and now, if all I'm running after is the next impulse sensation, or the next fleshly desire, friend, that's short-lived, that won't last, that'll burn you out as quick as you can imagine. But when you begin to look up, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. When you begin to look up and realize that's our purpose, that's our meaning, that's what, that's what man really is, a soul preparing for eternity, that changes your whole perspective and your whole outlook on life. As a Christian, what am I? I'm a light to the world, and so are you. Listen to what our Lord said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. In a world that is often filled with darkness, Jesus described that darkness in John 3, verse 17 following. In a world that is filled with darkness, you're that city that's set on a hill. You're that light following the steps of Jesus. 1 Peter 2, 21, For this were you called, because Christ also suffered and died for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in his footsteps. Like in Acts chapter 4, I want to be like those people, those men. Acts 4, verse 13, After Peter and John had boldly stood up to the religious leaders, had shown them from the Old Testament that Jesus was the Messiah, and really kind of just shown them what was what. In Acts 4, verse 13, the Bible says, it's like a light bulb moment. Then they realized they'd been with Jesus. Friend, that's what I want people for the glory of God. I want to be that light to the world. You, you, what are you? You're a light to the world as a Christian. What is man? My purpose here, I'm here to glorify and to honor my God in every way. I, I want you to think about a few passages that illustrate this idea with me. Isaiah 43, verse 7. Isaiah says, Everyone who's called by my name, God says, whom, listen now, I have created for my glory. I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. Not only is that a great passage detailing God as the creator of man and, and man being amenable to him, but listen to why God created us. Everyone whom I've created for my glory. I am here. You're here. Why is what does God care about me for? What is man? Friend, I'm here to honor, to magnify, and to bring good to the name of God in every way. Think about what Paul said concerning this. Consider with me 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 31. The apostle Paul said, whether we eat or whether we drink or whatever we do, we do all to the glory of God. Friend, that's what it's all about. Even small things like eating and drinking, the big things, the small things, whatever we do, Everything in my life and yours ought to be about honoring and glorifying Almighty God. So let's come full circle now. As I read that psalm, that, that very humbling psalm, where the psalmist, he goes out and he looks up and he says, look at these stars. Look at the vast expanse in the universe, the magnificence of the, uh, of the galaxies as he beholds the, the moon, as, as he considers God's creation, as you, as you stand on the edge of the Grand Canyon and you, and you look out at that vast creation of God, as you stand on the peak of the mountain and you look down in the valley, as you consider all that, what is man that God cares for him? My friend, here's what it is. God's a caring God. That's his nature. He's a loving father. That's who he is. He wants you and he wants me 
to spend eternity with him because although we're inside a fleshly body, that flesh is one day going back to the dirt. The spirit's going to return to God. I am a living soul or a living spirit, and so are you. One day, I am going to stand before God on a spiritual level, and based on obedience to the gospel or not, God's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of your Lord, or depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Friend, have we been living like we're unique? Have we been living like, listen, it, sometimes people don't live like, sometimes people don't live any different than animals. Sometimes people don't want to act like the birds of the sea and the uh, beasts of the field and the, and, the, and the birds of the air and the fish and all that. Sometimes people want to act like animals. We're not animals. We're different. We're unique. We're the pinnacle of God's creation. We are a representation of Almighty God on this earth. If that's the case, let's live like it. And let's live with the intent and the purpose that God wants us to have in our hearts. Friend, if you've never obeyed the gospel, we want you to know today that you are special to God. You're so special and so unique to God that he sent his only son to die for you. Did you know that? God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Have you believed in Jesus? John 8, verse 24. Have you turned from a life of sin and turned to God? Acts 3, verse 19. Have you made that good confession of Romans 10, verse 10? Have you been baptized into the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins? John 3, verse 5, Acts 22, 16. And are we walking every day in newness of life? What am I? What are you? We're created in the image of God. Let's live like it. Let's act like it. Join us next time as we study more from the Word of God. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs, today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.